Hey guys, Tomboy601, and today we have a review of one of the two campaign chips, the one I feel like you're going to be walking home with because, well, is is the better of the two. Let's, let's be clear. It's the all-new American Tier 7 Destroyer, the Black, and... Uh, yeah, it's a Fletcher with radar, boys. Is 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 going to be a spicy one. Is is great. Anyways, we're gonna go over the commander, the modules, the 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 consumables, uh, talk through all of the statistics, then head on into a game where we show off, and uh, then you can kind of get an idea on whether you think this campaign is worth it. Hint: It is. It is so much better than the Belfast campaign. Go out and and buy it because you'll want a destroyer that has smoke and radar. Anyways, let's go ahead and just start on down with the commander. I run Vincent Mordoff, though you could absolutely still run uh, William Halsey if you don't have Mordoff. I like Mordoff just because his base trait does highlight certain things. Specifically, it's going to reduce the main battery reload time. The two inspirations we are running are Eric Bay and William Sims, and I recently just got Eric Bay to 16.4. So uh, this is a fully maxed out build other than the uh, the final bit on Mortif, but I need more universal accommodations. Other skills, we are running Observant Rage, Mortar, Perceptive, Sheltered Arms, which is his unique skill, which is going to decrease the risk of main batteries being incapacitated by 75% and reduce the risk of torpedoes being incapacitated. And you know what? It does reduce the risk because earlier today I lost a whole torpedo launcher. It, it was a good time. Anyways, last thing we're running is unstoppable. Then let's go ahead and take a look at those modules. First things first, in the first mod slot, I'm aiming, I'm running aiming system mod one. Then in the se second mod slot, I'm running propulsion mod. Now, uh, a lot of people will probably say steering gears. Propulsion mod is what I really like for the American ships just because you are going to want to use it to juke shots. You're going to want to do use it to reduce your speed when you're coming into your to your smoke screen. I think propulsion mods work the best on the American destroyers, and I've been having a good time with it. Next, we're running concealment mod, and then the final one, we are running main battery mod three. Finally, let's go ahead and roll on into those consumables because that's what makes this ship special. First, you have the damage control party. Five second duration, 40 second reload. You know it, you love it, you have it on all your destroyers. Next, we have the good old American Smokes. 28 second duration, 124 second dispersion time, 240 second reload time, and you get two charges. And finally, you have either the engine boost or you can give it up for the radar. If you take the engine boost, you're an idiot. There's no reason to run the engine boost. Yes, you kind of miss it a little. But uh, radar is what we're going to be here for. It is uh, a kind of a weak radar, but it needs to be on the weaker side as far as in the grand universe of radars, or else this thing would be absolutely broken. Detection uh, is 7.5 kilometers. It's going to last only 13 seconds, which still gives you a couple of salvos to get out. Reload time is 150 seconds, and you get three charges of it, which is a very, very numerous radar, especially for a ship that doesn't have that we're not running fully packed on so those are all of the fun little consumables and such let's now get on in to the stats of the black so hit points it's gonna have 19,500 hit points with an armor thickness between 6 and 20 millimeters we'll go ahead and take a look at the armor view guys it's a fletcher um i, I don't know what to tell you you got you got 20 you got 19 millimeters all around, you're just coated in 19 millimeter armor, pretty much. It's a Fletcher. You you, you know it. You love it. Uh, the boat does not have any torpedo reduction. So uh, if you are about to take on a torpedo, just try to take it on the nose or the butt and try to get it saturated. That's the best help. That's the best advice I can give you. Beyond that, there is no torp reduction on this boat. Main battery. Well, it has. It's a Fletcher, so it has five one-barreled 127 millimeter guns. With a firing range of 11 kilometers in a reload time of 2.7 seconds, which is 4.4 seconds longer than the Fletcher. That's going to give you a shells per minute of 111, uh, 180 times 6.1 seconds. HE damage 1,980, giving you a DPM of 219,780. And this is a significant reduction 
from the base Fletcher. Base Fletcher has both a heavier, harder hitting shell uh, and a quicker reload. Its DPM in HE is 271,700. So you're looking at a fairly, uh, fairly good hit to your overall gun DPM. You have a 5% chance to set fire. AP, you're gonna be doing 2,310 damage with a DPM of 256,410. There are no secondaries on the boat, so you don't need to worry about secondary stats. What you do need to worry about is the torpedoes, because these torpedoes hit like a truck, but you're not going to be hitting many of them. Because, uh, well, you have two three-barreled 533mm torpedoes with a reload time of 96 seconds. Nice. Uh, damage is 21,600. They hit heavy. Detectability range, 0.9 kilometers, which is uh, respectable. Until you hear the top speed of these torps, it's only 43 knots. There are ships that go faster than these torpedoes, folks. Um, they they take forever. They are sea mines. They are they are slow goers. Uh, it is difficult to use these torpedoes because if a target is at any sort of range uh, and they make any sort of course correction you're going to be missing them. I, I started sending out a lot of widespread torps. Oh, and you're going to be tempted to send them out a lot because, well, they have a 13.7 kilometer range. AA, AA is respectable on the ship, just like on the Fletcher. Five kilometer range, uh, 54 minimum damage per second and a maximum of 125 damage per second. Max speed of the vessel, 35 knots with a turning radius of 560 meters and a rudder shift time of 3.3 seconds. I will say, I think this is one of the ships I would maybe consider running one of the speed flags on, just because you don't have that engine boost to have a, a, a higher average uh, top speed would be very, very useful. As far as history of the vessel, guys, uh, I think the main reason the black is in the game is because of, it, of, of, its, uh, of its whole number, 666. The devil's number, like, the devil's number. Uh, so it was hole number 666. And if I recall correctly, it was the 66th Fletcher of the 135 they ended up making. So, uh, you know, that's... I have a feeling it's just in the game because 666 and they wanted to have some fun. Anyways, with all of that said, those are the stats of the ship. Oh, uh, concealment. Did I go over that? Six kilometers. Uh, six kilometer by sea, 3.2 by air, and 2.6 while firing in smoke. Okay, and with all that said, let's go ahead and dive on in to a game with the Black. We are here on shards on the best spawn on the map. That's right, we are on the mid spawn. This is, I'll be honest, this is one of my favorite spawns in the game, period. It is always a blast to spawn mid spawn at shards. It's all about duking it out with the mid, uh, with the other mids and just trying to, to come out alive. It's it's a knife fight. I enjoy the good knife fight. Anyways, uh, we're going to push on into B and try to cap B because, you know, win win the area. And uh, while well, we're a destroyer with sonar and smoke, we're kind of set up to contest the caps. And that is what Black is kind of the king of. It is, it is very much the destroyer hunter, the king of getting out there and uh, engaging enemy destroyers and it is a ship that you build a little bit differently than you would usually do with the other kind of destroyer hunter gunboat type ships a lot of times i feel like you would normally build um these sorts of vessels with as much concealment as possible because you want to get within range of of the enemy ships um and i was actually struggling when i built this ship for more concealment, like I wasn't using mortar. Anyways, Fletcher pops up right here. I'll get to this point after we uh, knock out this Fletcher. Anyways, uh, Fletcher turns in. He's not firing at us, which tells us he is definitely trying to lay down some sneaky torps. We're going to continue our forward progress until he gets right behind the island. Once he's behind the island, we're going to stick the ship in full reverse. Um, that's going to make it so that none of those torps that he most likely fired will get to us. And as uh, he starts to smoke up, the Kansas takes him out. Anyways, as we were saying about not building for full concealment with the black, I was struggling a bit earlier in the day when I was building this with as much concealment as possible. Um, usually you want that concealment to be able to get close, but 
because you have smoke and because you have radar, you have a trump card that no other destroyer has, right? You have Orkin who has radar, but no smoke. You have the Pan-European destroyers who can have radar, but also have to give up smoke. You're the only one with this ability. Um, but what you need to avoid is getting close enough for ships with hydro to be able to pick you up. So you don't want to get super close to any enemy destroyers because uh, the number of vessels that have hydro, like, you know, Grossa Confest right there, uh, the number of ships that have hydro, have that ability, is significantly higher. And if you get close to them, they have something, they have hydro, which is going to last way longer than your, than your radar. And it's going to put you at a significant disadvantage. So it behooves you to be in that sweet spot that is detectably just outside of their hydro range. That way, if you get detected and you can't detect them, you're able to easily pop your radar, detect them, and kind of continue on with your day, be able to focus them down and keep them at range where their hydro won't be able to detect you. Or uh, if they smoke up, make it so that you make sure you're staying far enough away to not push. So that's that's my kind of tip with the black anyways we came around here we know we need to be cautious with the grossa cone first um and it's uh, and it's hydro we don't know how long he's going to be running it but we're going to start using these torpedoes now these torpedoes there's kind of two uses for them one you can use them as very much zoning torps and by that i mean you know the popular areas on a map where ships like to go Throwing these torpedoes there, especially in, like, bases where you have to, uh, the, the domination game modes, where you're like, oh, I know if I get at this angle and I throw these torps this way, this is a popular spot where people like to cap, like to capture from. That is where these torps are great. The other one is kind of in this ship is nose on and we've gone ahead and smoked up and we're just going to slowly start throwing torps their direction. Because of the range on these torps, ships can continue to back up and these, these torpedoes will continue to uh, go ahead and kind of make their way towards the enemy ships. Um, anyways, we've gone ahead and smoked up because, well, we have these two battleships here. They are uh, ripe for the farming, and that's exactly what we're going to do. The original plan was to try to take over that Fletcher Smoke, but by the time we got over to the Fletcher Smoke, the Fletcher Smoke had dissipated. So now we're just going ahead and uh, using the, our smoke to go ahead and kind of farm away on these ships. Watch watch the uh the torpedo re reload kind of get ready we have that one torp that looks like it's going to go well for the gross of conference you can see just how long these torpedoes take to get anywhere like the thing i always try to remember when using these torps is like hey that is about how long it would have taken the destroyer to like yolo rush over there which is an insane amount of time <laughs> when you think about it like that anyways we get the nice hit on the gross of cone first we see the damage continues to tick up even as he drops spot, which is good news for us. That means he's burnt his damage control party and he's going to continue to flood. That's exactly what we want. We're going to now flip our uh, our attention over to the Massachusetts. We get a nice fire on Massachusetts. He drops down. We look back and we see enemy torpedoes coming in. Uh, we're going to assume that that is the enemy destroyer, which means the enemy destroyer is hunting us. We also have the uh rga indicator as well as our tag being located so he knows we're still in our smoke um we're going to continue to stay in in this smoke uh and we will see what happens as soon as the smoke dissipates but we want to continue to farm this massachusetts as long as we can um we see some what looks like relative close uh he fire so we know that destroyer is most likely close by um we're getting down to the last second of the smoke and as it uh, dissipates, I think we instantly get spotted. As soon as we get spotted, we're like, up, oh, okay, we know there's an enemy destroyer nearby. Pop that, pop the radar, and away we go. Now we need to go ahead and start to engage this Ostergotland. The good news about uh, about this is now that that smoke is gone, uh, people have a nice line of sight on the Ostergotland. He doesn't have smoke. He can't really disengage. We can go ahead and start farming him down, uh, start getting those get in those hits in make sure that he can no longer really be an effective destroyer and as we've kind of sat in uh b this whole time we've taken out the the we've taken out everyone who spawned here ostergotland's going to be the last one we need to hunt down with the little slither of health our team has successfully taken a um they're still kind of fighting for the remaining control of c but with our two current uh with our well now two enemy ships but with our two current caps 
we have the points advantage. We're going to try to finish off this Osta Gotland. He still has relatively sneaky torps that could uh, cause a hindrance to our remaining battleships. So we want to go ahead and wipe him off the map. And that's what we're going to do. He's going to kind of flee for the rest of the map. So let me just go ahead and uh, give my final thoughts on Black. It is a fantastic Fletcher um, that gives up a little bit. It, it does absolutely give up DPM. It gives up a lot in the Torps, right? It's a very different play style from Fletcher, but it still is reminiscently the same with such expanded utility. Um, I Fletcher is one of my fav is one of my favorite boats. It was the first tier seven I bought. Uh, it, you know the the American destroyers were the first were the first ships I went from from all the way to the lowest tier, all the way to the highest tier with. And to have the black, which is a nice new turn on the Fletcher, I am in absolute love. Does this ship need to be at tier seven when we have the Fletcher already? I'm not 100% convinced. It is going to be very powerful. This ship is going to be played by those people who play into divisions all the time. It is a fantastic utility ship just for that radar alone. Um, and because of that, uh, be prepared for it to become a very aggravating sort of ship to come and play against when you play as a destroyer. I think um, for other ships, I think black can be relatively easily countered, especially because of just how slow those torpedoes are. Um, but, you know, it's still an American gumbo. It can still dish out the HE, it can still cause the fires, it can still engage the enemies and do a very good job of it. It's just a sort of thing where... Uh, Black is giving up some of its ability to engage, to engage uh, everyone else just to give up, just to specialize in killing destroyers. And it's fun for that. It's great for that. I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's a ship I will happily keep in my port. So yeah, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.